So, you know, I go on our YouTube channel on a regular basis. I look at both All Me and Baltimore Knife and all the other channels that we're dealing with. And we, we pay attention to what the analytics are and what you guys are watching. Well, you're watching Castlevania, no question about it. You know, explosion of views on our build for Alucard's Heirloom Sword. But that happens anytime something comes to Netflix. It's definitely something that uh, everybody gets excited about for that show, for Castlevania. And so they go searching for things, all things Castlevania, and certainly ours comes up. I decided it was a really good idea to show you this guy's, you know, this sword again to show it to you guys. Um, I don't know if you remember, but, you know, fully forged blade, Ilya forged this blade out, um, gets heat treated, uh, Bill does all the grinding, polishing on that, Matt's forming these pieces. Um, I do a lot of lathe turning, so these two pieces are symmetrical, and, uh, you know, I turn it on a, from a solid piece of square. I turn this, I just basically free turn the one just from a picture, and then to make sure the second one looked exactly like it, um, there's a duplicating tool that you can get. I mean, you can get them in plastic from Home Depot. They make real nice old metal ones. They have tiny little fingers and you just push it up against that piece. Shows you the profile. So when I was cutting the second side, I was able to just match the profile by holding it up and checking it. Forged piece of pipe. Uh, initially, our intention was to just hot forge this or put some wood on the inside initially and forge it. But it, it turned out that it was easier to create this form just hammering it cold um, and Ilya does that on the Iron Kiss uh, power hammer I believe and you know that's something that we've you know gone back and done a few we usually wood core them uh, so that they've got uh, a core inside they're not just hollow like that so this this pommel shape I could have turned it in one piece we, we made it in two pieces but the real reason that we did that was you know we we're gonna have I'm pretty sure it's Matt who facets this he goes in and cuts these uh, these scoops kind of on the inside, but we didn't want them to show here. So we made sure that was a separate piece going down. Both of these are threaded. So this one goes down and this acts as a lock nut. Um, pretty big thread in there to, you know, give it a lot of integrity. So that, that was something that we had to do in two pieces to get the inside and outside facets, just to make it a lot easier. We use our knife wheel to cut in, you know, the spiral down through the steel handle. Um, I did set this up on the milling machine and cut some internal slots here for these blades. Um, if we were to make a sword like this for sale, obviously we won't copy the exact heirloom sword, but this, this kind of form is very pleasing to the eye and really nice in the hand. So we would make this, but we probably wouldn't cut and put these in because that's something that could cut your hand. It's just not necessary. But the form, this kind of uh, faceted end, kind of bullet shape here with the, you know, the wasping in here. Uh, that's a great looking guard. Um, it's a little modern looking, obviously, but would definitely be something that we, we would make some more of. Uh, this really long blade is uh, 41 inches. Um, I own an original S-Talk, which is kind of the form of this blade. That original S-Talk has a 44 inch blade that's a little bit narrower. Obviously, we were trying to get the visual closer to Alucard sword, which does change in length in the anime a fair amount. I mean, sometimes it's incredibly long and sometimes, you know, when he's carrying it, it it's, you know, about like this. So this is why we decided on this size. Very solid sword, carved the center section um, on the CNC milling machine, actually. So it just cut the outside profile and then Matt went in and, you know, kind of created the faceting to create the form. Um, so another sword that's pretty much uh, everybody in the shop working on. I know that I said that the lightsaber katana is my favorite sword from the series, and I'm gonna stick with that, but I have a lot of seconds, and this is definitely a number two. It's very rigid because it's thick, thick in cross section, so uh, it's very rigid even over its length. It has that, has that feeling of power, much like, uh, like Luck Pluck does, um, where it feels like a very powerful weapon, something that you could strike a very, very strong blow with. We're definitely gonna create a line of swords like this. Like I said, they won't be identical to the heirloom sword because we don't own the rights to this. But this type of construction, this type of weapon, we're absolutely gonna make these available for you. Thank you. Click the logo to subscribe or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel or go to Almi and watch Man at Arms.